Hello once again, this is Polly. I'm very excited today to be joined by the fathers. If you followed the pilot episode, I invited the mothers, um, Elaine, Ia, and Michelle, to talk about motherhood in the time of the pandemic. This time I'd like to bring the fathers in and to give the voice to all the fathers out there about their experience, about parenting and fatherhood in the time of the pandemic. So here with us um, are Christopher, Martin, and Nick. So Christopher is a husband and a father of three. He's a businessman, born and raised in Davao City, loves to play online games, food lover, and according to him, and I'll, I'll ask Ia about this later on, he's also a good lover. There you go, Ia, that's for you. Second, we have Nick Velasco. Perhaps a lot of you knows who Nick is. He's a Filipino-American retired professional basketball player. He was drafted second overall by Sunkist in 1997. He was born in Stockton, California, played and coached many years of professional basketball in the Philippine Basketball Association, and is in port for Westport's Malaysia Dragons in the ASEAN Basketball League. He now runs his own sports academy, which is the Belasco Unlimited Skills Academy, and he is the general manager of the City Club in Makati. Of course, joining us is Martin Lechauco. He has been a venture capitalist, private equity investor, investment banker for the past 30 years. He is currently the managing director and head of Philippines of Crescent Point, which is a private equity firm that invests in category, category leading consumer and consumer enabled companies in Southeast Asia and in China. Crescent has made four investments in the Philippines so far. He is also the newly appointed treasurer of the Filipina Special Olympics. His more important full-time profession, however, is being father to his 23-year-old daughter, Katya, and his 15-year-old son, Renzo. His new hobby, which I think he will be sharing that to us in a while, is singing and his dream is to write his own songs one day. So let's all welcome our fathers. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi. I love it. Hello, everyone. How's, how are you all? Nico, how are you? Oh, oh we got an echo. We got an echo. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. Good. It was my fault. She, she left the room. We're good. She left the room. <laughs> so Nick is the husband of Mafe. Martin is this the brother of Michelle. And um, you, you also have seen Michelle last week. And then Fur is the husband of Ia. I'll probably be asking the same set of questions they asked the mothers just to hear your side of the story. Okay. Um, so almost a year into the pandemic that we're all in, wherever you are in the world, we're all experiencing the same thing. I'll start with Fur. Like, how are you and your family? So, kami, uh, we're doing okay. Uh, we are complete. We are healthy. But not letting our guards down. And... Mm -hmm. Always and every day praying that the virus will go away. That's it. Definitely. I heard because see Sophie was praying about, you know, is it Sophie or Clara? Asking. Uh, Sophia. Sophia. Asking yes. whether, like, mom, when will it ever go away? We've been praying for quite some time. And nandito pa yung virus. Oh, oh nag, ang wish niya sa birthday niya is mag-go away na yung virus. Tapos after her birthday, nagtanong siya sa amin kung naikinig ba daw si God. So, mahirap yun na question and mahirap na sagot. Did you find an answer for that question? Ang sinabi lang namin is iba yung time ni God saka iba yung time na as, as humans. So, yun oh, well, that's you know more about that, I think. <laughs> okay. How about Martin? How are you in your family? I know this is like a difficult time for everyone, but how's everybody there? 
Well, thankfully, uh, we are okay. Put my mic away, sorry. Um, well, thankfully, we are. Thankfully, we are okay. And, uh, I think we are going to rely on Kumu as well. So we got to we got to shut all of our volumes down. Okay. Yeah. So. so you can give it a try. This happens in a live show. That's fine. 2021, relevant this technology. So while Martin is fixing the audio, I'll probably just jump with Nick first, and then I'll go back to Martin. Nick, how's, how's your family so far with this pandemic? How's everyone coping? Uh, the family's uh, uh, okay, we're good. No? Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I think we're good. So, uh, we're, we're actually, we've, we've done so many different things in the pandemic. Me and my daughter started swimming at 7 a.m. We started doing basketball training, you know, in the dance studio because the basketball court was not available. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've, we've discovered so many new things in the pandemic, and it's, it's kind of weird. You know, I, I think this is... Uh, something that's happened around the world where people discovered so many different things about themselves uh, that they would have never discovered if it wasn't for this pandemic that we're in globally. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. Uh, we put together some uh, family traditions that we never would have done if not for the pandemic and, and we're very happy about it so it's it's a huge negative around the world but it, it, it's all about how you're going to find the positives and and just latch on to those and take off good and we'll be talking more about that later on because i'm sure um even the moms when i asked them about their um rediscovered self michelle talked about being able to plant now I'm not sure if that's planned, plan, but if you do, then go ahead and share that. But um, I'd really like to hear more about that later on too, Nick. And how about Martin? I hope your audio is okay now. Yeah, sorry, I don't think it was coming from my end. I turned off my mic, but am I coming good. in clearly? Yeah. Everything's yeah, so good now. I think very similar to what Fer and Nick said. Uh, one year into the pandemic, I think one thing I can say is that personally, I have never prayed as much as I have. Hmm. I, think I can say the same for uh, Tanya um, and my hmm. kids. So I don't live with my with my kids. I live alone, but um, I I do see my kids almost every day, and hmm. I actually had the uh, blessing, an opportunity to to stay with them over the lockdown. I moved into their place last March 19. If I look back uh, from today to the first time this thing happened, I think a lot of changes, but uh, I think the biggest change, which I believe a lot of us share, but I'm just speaking for myself, is that we have learned to actually count the smallest of blessings. Count it's the not that, I think it's it's not that we were ungrateful, but mm. I think we personally I think I I was grateful, but I don't think I counted. I probably was just counting the big blessings that came my way. Mm. But what I have learned and what I have spoken to my children about is to count the even the smallest of blessings. That's beautiful. Because 
smallest of blessings now are being magnified um, because we lack the social interaction that we once had before. And I think it's part of the discovery that everybody is trying to understand and process as we go through this entire pandemic, which Nick mentioned a while ago, that he and his family um, have discovered, rediscovered something, ritual per se, that they do collectively. Nick, can you talk more about that? Nick, would you like to talk more about the things that you discovered? Oh, it's me. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> That's fine. I'm sorry. I actually, I actually texted Martin, and um, his his notifications made a noise, and I got thrown off. <laughs> so sorry about the noise. That was me texting Martin. I just I, I I'm such a big fan of Martin, and uh, I've known him for so long. And I know his kids, we, our kids were classmates together in Everest. Hmm. And uh, yeah, the blessings are big. And um, a lot of people are focused on the negative. It's, mm -hmm. it's nice if we can shift our focus to the positive mm -hmm. and understand what, uh, what has came out of this pandemic. Of mm -hmm. course, there's a lot of deaths. There's thousands of people, hundreds of thousands that have died. Uh, but. I don't know. It's it's uh, it's a little tricky because so many people have discovered new ways of living that they wouldn't have discovered in the past because we have all these gadgets and we have all these all this mm -hmm. technology. You know, now we had to put that down and focus on what do we do now? What do we do with our kids? How do we connect? Did you discover? Uh, something within the family like more of like a ritual that you do together that was that never happened before before the pandemic one thing for me is that i always you know i work for alpha land city club and we have all these restaurants we have a swimming pool we have a gym we have basketball court and we live upstairs mm -hmm. and i would always tell mafe even before the pandemic that if I could just get my routine together so I can work out before I go to the office, it would be perfect because I have all the facilities. And um, during the pandemic, you know, me and our president, Dennis Valdez, and, and Dr. Ben, he's a uh, medical director of Eglin, hmm. they swim. And so I got caught up on their swimming routine at, at 7 or 6 a.m. And... Uh, it, it happened. Everything I wished that I, I could develop this routine to work out before I go to the office oh, happened nice. during the pandemic. And um, as my daughter, myself, and my sons, that yeah, we would go down to the pool at 7 a.m., work out and swim. It was a perfect routine. But I honestly feel like if it wasn't for the pandemic, I would have never found that routine. You know, and, and I actually did it today. I worked out at 7 a.m. So my, so wish, my wish came true, but it wouldn't have happened if not for the pandemic because I was too caught up with everything else that we do in our everyday mm. lives. And we mm. have happy hour, and we have meetings all day, and we have late night things. But when all that shit, all that stuff got <laughs> shut down, sorry. You can, it's already 10 p.m. <laughs> Philippine time, so sure. Yeah. When all that stuff got shut down, <laughs> I look right at my wife. Um, <laughs> I discovered that, and it was perfect. Mm. Like that's what I wished for for so long. Sorry, guys. So, so, that, so that seems to be like the silver, not the silver lining per se, but something, something, something new and something healthy that you wish to continue doing. It seems like. Well, it was something that I was looking for that I was hoping would happen, but I couldn't figure out how to make it happen with mm -hmm. the pre-pandemic. Mm. You know, the pre-COVID. And, and now there is no other how way to fit it. To do it. But once everything got shut down, it was so easy and so pure to just be like, this is where it happens. You know? yeah, that's it was right. different. That's nice. So swimming for you, how about fur? Um, so, do you did you have any like family family ritual or things that you do now that you never had the chance to do before? Uh no time kasi ng pandemic it was the mm -hmm. yung time na nag-enroll din si Iyak sa kay uh, Miss Kimilu 
So, yes. nakita niya yung passion with, uh, tawag nito, yung well-being boost. So, right. parang, in, parang sinama namin sa, after ng prayer namin is yung, what are you thankful for today? So, so parang na, na, parang na part na sa routine ng kids as well as sa amin ng, mm-hmm. as parents. So that's one thing na nadagdag sa amin. Look at your yeah. beautiful kids for Yes. And your beautiful wife, of course. My yes, great yes. friend Pia. <laughs> Good. So so pretty much you know, Ia, Ia's there in discovering that path of, um, like, you know, what Kimi does. How about yourself? Is there anything that that you did as well, just like how Nick did it? You know, we discovered swimming, going to the gym. He wants to do that probably after the pandemic. How about for you? So, nung time nung pandemic, na-realize ko na kailangan ko pala ng tulog. Yun, yun. Mm. I mean, parang yung yung temperament ko parang naging better uh, huh? yung parang communication skills ko is napa better din kasi at work parang all you have to do all day is paperwork doing the math tapos going out parang kung pupunta ka man sa isang lugar parang mainit lang yung ulo mo kasi puro mali na kita mo so nung time ng pandemic parang na na tone down din ako at the same okay. time parang na nakita ko kung ano yung important which is ang family so that's it oh that's good that that's that it's nice to hear that side because you know we don't necessarily get to hear fathers talk about you know mental health etc martin is for you I think this is something that I'm really, really curious to know. I mean, I can only say about how my husband does it. But for you, Nick, and for, but I'll start with you. How do you take care of yourself from that perspective of if I need some steam off, what do you do? Where do you go? Okay. So, so Nick said he swam at 7 a.m. I swam. Um, <laughs> At 8 a.m., I swam 500 meters today in a three-meter pool. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> so I, I think my so there are a couple of things that I have done. I'm very busy, but I make it a point, and my family knows this that um, I try not to book any meetings lunchtime. I buy. Okay. I bike every lunchtime when I can, rain or shine. I think one thing also, one ritual that I can say I was happy to do. Over the past year, I actually reconnected with friends who I had not seen mm-hmm. in about 35 years. Uh, I went to school in Boston uh, right after grade school in Xavier. I went to boarding school. So I did that, uh, I mean, and you know, even if you reconnect with friends after 35 years and you don't have anything to say because you don't know where to start, I think the fact that you reconnect with somebody, you know, it made me feel good, so that's one. Mm-hmm. I think the second ritual that we put in place is every Thursday, I started a ritual where it started with all the the boy nephews, or uh, sorry, nephews are boys, but my nephews, we got together, uh, we get together every Thursday. We mess around, uh, this is at 9.45. In case they're watching tonight, uh, mm-hmm. the real objective of that get together is, is really to stay connected. You know? mm-hmm. It comes in the form of jokes, we have guest stars, but at the end of the day, I always tell my son and I tell my daughter the same thing, but more for the boys, that like how I am with my siblings and like mm-hmm. how I am with my cousins, mm-hmm. in the future, you guys will be looking after each other. When you try to do that, 
to Teresa. Rituals are very simple. Another ritual is I'm, not, I'm very expressive of my love to my children, but my children are not very expressive. Okay. But I know they love me. So every morning, I make it a point to, you know, for them to say hello. When they say good morning, I know they're awake. And I know they also want to hear from me. So I know that a simple, Papa, I'm awake, I'm in school, or for my daughter, Katya, good luck. The messages of, of my kids, uh, there are messages in between or in, you have to read in between the lines. It's mm. another day, you're alive, we're doing well. And that I'm very, very grateful for. And, and, then, and, and Martin, that's what you said a while ago about appreciating the smallest of things. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I read, I googled, and I found out that Queen's University has a study and it says there are 6,200 thoughts that enter a human being's mind in a single day. That's so it's so difficult, it's so difficult to choose those moments, but, you know, uh, my kids are watching, you just don't know that every single moment that I, I'm with you guys, I have an imaginary backpack, as I told my sister, and every single memory, praying, messing around, uh, goes there, and that goes to, so one other before I monopolize this program, I, but I just wanna- <laughs> You're not the I, worry. I'm very, I'm very uh, sentimental. Uh, over the lockdown, also, I put together some videos of the special occasions of of my children. Because mm -hmm. I believe, uh, you know, I'm 53, 54, I hope 55, and so on. But I told my son over the weekend that you know, life will end right for everybody, but it's the memories that we create that will forever be. That will never go away. So, can I just get my tissue? <laughs> <laughs> and I think Fur and Nick is agreeing to that. I, I think I think Nick and Fur is agreeing to that. And it's wonderful well, that you put it out there because people rarely talk about that, Martin. So thank you so much for sharing um, how you really cherish to be around your kids. And I think all fathers would love that, right? Which brings me to the next question. If ever, if ever I'll be asking your kids about who you are as a father, I'll start with Nick. Nick, how do you think your your kids will describe you as a father? Shoot, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> it's funny because just a while ago, uh, my my kids one of my kids found an old hard hard drive with all these videos from uh maybe five six years ago and they started posting it in you know, family group chat started posting all the videos and it, it, it's just crazy uh but i really hope this is my hope i don't know how they're gonna look at me but I just hope that they see me as someone that uh, has a lot of integrity. Uh, I, I haven't changed through the years. I've, I've been kind of just who I am. And uh, just like what Martin says, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm really touched. I just want to go back, I'm really touched by what, what Martin said, because, uh, you know, our kids train basketball together right now. And I actually just saw Martin a couple of hours ago. And uh, we were nervous about this uh, interview, and we just said we're going to have fun with it. But uh, I've known Martin for how many years? The kids were like third grade. Just a long time ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Now they're fifteen, so sixteen. But that's how long we've known each other, and uh, I'm really, you know, I, I know Martin. I know what he's been through, and uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. And, uh, hey, Martin, I just want to take this time to say I'm proud of you. Uh, you're an awesome dad. I just want to let you know. I'm, I'm going to break the, the, the content here and say you're an awesome dad. Uh, 
I love what you're doing with your family, with your kids, and, and it's, it's pretty cool, man. And you actually brought a little tear to my eye a while ago. Love you, bro. I love you too, Nick. Yeah, and, and I was trying to text him. I was trying to text him on Viber, and uh, he turned his notifications off. I just wanted to hear that sound. <laughs> but, uh, Good. Awesome. And, and back to the the thing is, you know, we just do what we have to do. Um, mm -hmm. The fathers, uh, we, you know, there's a there's a time capsule, and you know, you see my kids there. This was maybe two or three years ago. Time moves so fast, and and now they're 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 growing fast, and they have their own opinions of me. And uh, the weirdest thing for me is I have a 21 year old, and I have an 18 year old, and the next one is 15. So the two oldest are adults. So it's kind of embarrassing because I know they look at me in, in a adult eyes, yes, rather than kid eyes, and it, it's. They have their opinions, and it's, it's a little different. So I get judged differently from my kids now at this stage. But we have so many that uh, we have some babies too. So it's a different, it's a different uh, era right now in our family. But this I'm is happy. So, so it's technically more of like you know that the kids are in different generations, like different ages. They will probably look at you differently from their lenses. Um, if right. I'll be asking. Nico, Nico probably have a different description of dad Nick, while the youngest may probably have something different as well. How about fur? Is that the same with um, the three kids? They say they're they're pretty much at the same age. How do you think they'll describe daddy fur? So, ang um, kids kasi kasi is uh, eight years old and six and who just turned three three uh -huh. yes so ang pinaka description lang nila sa akin is daddy is the strongest yung kaya ko buhatin to mga bigat kaya ko tong dalin to lahat-lahat sabay-sabay so at the same time yun yung nagiging fear ko mm. kasi baka dumating yung time na masabi nila ay mas malakas pa ako kay daddy so, mm. for now, pinapakita ko lagi sa kanila na I'm constant and I'm the strongest. I'm always there for them, making them laugh. So, hoping, hoping ako even even when they're adults, i-consider pa rin nila ako as the world's strongest man. And you will be the strongest man in their eyes. No, I, thank you for 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 giving me that opening for my next question, really. Because you mentioned about, you know, fathers are strong, maasahan, we always, I mean, in the family too, with my husband, my husband is pretty much that person to that figure in the family. Like he's the strongest person, emotionally, mentally, etc. But how do you, how do you replenish that? I'll start with Martin. How do you, how do you get to replenish the, 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 the father who didn't sign you, the father in you? Well, I have a very, I might have a unique story, which mm -hmm. I don't really mind. I don't know who's watching, but you know, life is too short. You know? And I think, mm -hmm. uh, Nick, uh, so Nick, thank you very much for that message. Love you, man. So there are three years that I wish I could really take back. Mm -hmm. Three years where I think I hit midlife crisis. And, and Nick has seen, Nick saw me at my worst among others. And I'm not, anything can happen, right? So I am speaking from the heart. Would I get back those three years? I probably won't. Hmm. You know, there was, uh, I collect all the letters of my children from the time they were born or the time they were able to write. If my daughter is listening to me now, my daughter Katya is 23. When I was going through my problems, she said, and Katya, if you're there, I don't know if you remember this. She said, one day I want, I still want you to walk me down the aisle. But the way they're going, 
you probably won't even be able to walk me down that. You probably won't even see me in my graduation, the school graduated. So that was one wake up call. My son, uh, Renzo, is 15. My son is not very expressive of his love. He only says, I love you, Papa, in his dreams, and he doesn't know that. But the love of my son is so profound. It is so profound because it is unique in the sense that he will carry whatever legacy that I may leave behind. And so today, I am grateful to God, to where I am, uh, you know, loving and getting back that zest for life. Mm. So to replenish that, I think what I've learned is that even if things are good, and even if things are well, in the past, I usually pray to God when I mm. need something. Okay. But sometimes, I really have those days, and this could be a street where things are going very well, that a part of me tells me, why are things so good? Something is bound to happen. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned over the years, and which I'm trying to teach my children, is to pray, not only when we need something, to pray when we are at our lowest, but to pray when good things come our way. And then I will probably, so that is sort of my way of replenishing uh, whatever, you know, that, 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 that good thing inside. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope I answered the, your question, Polly. You have you have and i'm just taking each word in slowly as well enjoying your answers and responses same as for and nick but before we move any further let me just check the messages because a lot is giving you love here in the comment section um from michelle from your sister she said Marx, those three years were necessary when we allow ourselves to be broken God rebuilds in such a marvelous way. And look at you now, five hearts for you. Okay, I think Martin needs to drink something. And Ia said, Ia is here also for, she said, um, Daddy Fur is an awesome, um, Daddy Fur is an awesome husband. Oh, sorry, that's Michelle. Ia said, yes, Daddy is the strongest, the funniest and the sweetest. I remembered when you asked Ia about the teeth like kung apat na lang yung ngipin mo would you like them to be together or separate <laughs> good and another one from Eloy Eloy said God gave us memory so we will have roses in December Martin ang ganda ng garden that you're creating for your children you have a garden garden yes. you're creating for your children's children and nephews okay that's beautiful but there's one person here who wants to ask a question, and I think everybody can answer this. From Roberto Tan Figueroa, he wants to know, I'll probably start with Nick, but further Martin. I have a question. What is your motto in life? Looking at, looking at it from the lens of this pandemic, what is now your motto in life? Uh. I'll start it off. I think the motto in life is that you can't waste any time. Like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, everyone took everything for granted before mm -hmm. the pandemic. Um, like for myself, I always wanted to figure out how to work out before I go to the office. Uh, and, and, and it turns out during the pandemic, me and my daughter, that, that became our routine. Me and my sons jumped on it. Um, and then to take it even further, like what Fer was saying, and, and you get this time with your kids every Sunday and, and you start reflecting. So that's one thing that we started doing as a family. 
we started reflecting. We started watching mass. So there's all, all these online uh, mm. masses that you can tap into every day, every Sunday. And we started. There, there's questions after the mass. We started watching CCF, and mm -hmm. and that was our family discussion every Sunday. And we're mm -hmm. still doing it up to now. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that would have happened without the pandemic. Uh, there's a lot of negatives that happened. There's a lot of people that have died. There's there's a lot of uh, bad things that happened in, during 2020. But those things are something that my family would have never experienced. You know, and, uh, mm -hmm. I'm actually very thankful for it. So my motto is, you know, don't waste time. You know, we don't know. Uh, we don't know how much time we have on this earth. We don't know how much time we have with our children. So we got to make every second count. We got to make every moment count. Every memory, um, you know. And, and you know, I'm, I'm with I'm with Martin. Uh, they come here and, and they they train basketball together, and it's it's pretty touching, you know. Like, you know, I've known Martin for so many years. Uh, you know, I'm trying to, Martin, you 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 got me fighting tears, man. You know. Uh, it's pretty touching, man. Like I'm, I'm so impressed with what you do. I'm so impressed with how you're handling your situation and, and your family. Mm. I'm sorry to bring it back there, but I just have to. Like, that's that's my guy. Thank you, Nick. So pretty much what I'm hearing from the three of you is really going back to God, praying. Um, you know, some people might probably interpret it differently, spirituality, what have you, but it all goes back to that, really going back inside going up praying rituals how about for what is your motto in life going Can up. i say one more thing go um, ahead because you 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 touched on a negativity uh there's a lot of negativity that's trying to be thrown our way and it's it's like we just have to resist it you know you see what's happening in the u.s uh, the politics the riots the, the racial mm -hmm. inequality and it's, mm -hmm. it's are we going to resist that or are we going to latch on to it and run with it? Are we going to resist it or are we going to be positive? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's really the main thing. There's there's a lot of different things being thrown at us and it's up to us to what we're going to latch on to. And the way that you're saying it is you also you always have a choice. You get to hear both sides, negativity and positivity, and what would you like to resonate in you? And what would you like to live with? So thank you for that. Nick. I, exactly. I that. How about for what is your motto now in life? Um, that's a question from Roberto and Figueroa in the lens of the pandemic. So ang um, motto ko ever since like early 20s, ang um, motto ko talaga is don't forget why you started. Mm -hmm. uh, Ina-apply ko yan sa, sa lahat when it comes to stability, uh, financial, family. So nakakonek ko siya lagi. Don't forget why you started. So each and every day, parang nagiging option ko to do good, to do to be the best. So medyo hard on myself din ako when it comes to uh, mga motos. So nagsistick sa akin lagi is yun. Don't forget why you started. That's it. Started. How about Martin? Um, what's your motto now from Roberto? Well, thank you very much, Nick. And for I'm going to high school and college. When you have group work, I actually just cut and paste. I will cut and paste. <laughs> okay. Uh, seriously, I have autos in life. Uh, mm -hmm. I will never forget these four words. Uh, this too shall pass. And I think it is something that I have shared with so many friends that are struggling, all forms of suffering. So this too shall pass is very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. I think my second motto in life is, and this has got nothing to do with my new hobby. Mm -hmm. I really like what um, Emery Austin said, which is, uh, you know, some days, there won't be a song in your heart, but sing anyway. It's got nothing to do with that, mm. what I'm into now. But I think that connotes a lot of things and sends a lot of messages. You will not basically, your days will not 
you will have days where you you just hope that they will come. You will have days where you will hope more days like that will come. But you will have days where wala. Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. have to be the message of that is you have to be grateful to be alive. Grateful and to at, be alive. And at 53, you know, every birthday for me, so I really like birthdays. I think my friends and family know that. And then the last motto is something that I had just written uh, mm -hmm. Monday morning because with my 15-year-old son who friends up and stays with me over the week, every weekend, I'm starting to make him watch movies that, um, you know, I watched when he was, I'm not talking about Blue Lagoon or Crooked Shields. But I actually, so I, so I made Brooke him watch. Wait, you, you just brought up Brooke Shields. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. There is always something to be grateful for. You just have mm -hmm. to find it. But there was one movie, the movie that we watched over the weekend was Scent of a Woman. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Nick, you probably watched that. Uh, per, I think I, I, I think you're much younger than us. So you should watch the movie. But I will never forget a line of Al Pacino when he told Charlie. I actually wrote it down. May I read it? Go ahead, please. So it said, some people live a lifetime in a minute. I had watched the movie many years ago, and I had watched it again, but this is the first time I had watched it with Renzo. And at 53, and on the third time of watching it, that was the line that really stayed in my heart. Mm. We don't know. Every day when we wake up, we don't know. We don't know what's in store for us, right? But every special moment, you just, uh, you know, you just try to to grab it and and just put it back in your. You just never forget. And then during the bad times, all you have to do is look back at that minute, mm -hmm. and things will be better. It always works. Look at that. Minute. Thank you very much. That is beautiful, Martin. And, and I like the fact about how you're watching it together with your son. I think that that moment for fathers is always symbolic because my husband too gets to watch something and really pass on a learning to our kid as well. His seven-year-old boy just wants the father touch and um, some moments with the father and really learn from the father. So if, and I think I'll go with Nick, Nick, like, you have you have you have sons if i'm not wrong if i'm not mistaken what is it that you'd like to tell them about fatherhood and parenting that perhaps they can bring with them the moment they'll be building their respective families in the future uh well one thing i'd like to say is uh i'm, I'm really happy about this forum tonight because I'm learning new things from Fer, I'm learning new things from Martin. Like you know, it, it, it's, it's really enlightening in a lot of ways. I, I have six kids, but I think that's the main thing about being a parent is that you, just like in anything else, <clears throat> we're always going to be learning. It's it's a nonstop process. Um, so for my kids, I was I was really lucky with my dad. Mm. <clears throat> My grandfather, they, one thing that they uh, really instilled in me was to respect women, uh, mm. manners, uh, and, you know, proper etiquette. And, you know, like my wife right now, like if, if she's going to go get in the car, I, I don't let her open the car door. You know, that's, that's one thing that I won't allow her to do. Uh, if there's any lady, I don't care if it's a stranger or a friend or a family member, is coming to the door. I make sure I open the door for him, any door, even if it's a small door. And uh, I think that's that's something that uh, I want to instill into my kids, and I think I do it by example. Okay. Uh, but it's something that it maybe is a lost art in in the mm -hmm. world today. People, people forget about those things. It is a small thing. Like you could ask Mafe; she doesn't 
I run to the car. If she's ahead of me, I'm going to run to it and I'm going to open it. You know, and uh, uh, that's that's something that uh, maybe the world needs to get back to. Mm. That's, that's definitely something that's helped me in my life uh, mm -hmm. from my dad, my grandfather, and I'm passing it on to my boys. And uh, having a daughter, on the other hand, is, is something totally different. Uh, my daughter is is my everything. Yeah. Like she's very amazing to me. And uh, just to give you some background on her, she's she thinks she's Kobe Bryant. You know, she's Mamba mentality. For her to have that mentality is is, is crazy. Like I can't I can't keep her off the basketball court. <laughs> and I'm happy about it, but. You know, she's 12 and she's going into her years of developing into a woman. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. But also, with the boys, it's the same thing. When they hit 15, it's, it's a whole other story. They, mm -hmm. I guess, boy or girl, they're going to change into a completely different people. So I think it's up to us as parents to have the integrity and um, always be the same so that they know even when they change from young kids to adults, which I've experienced, Great. they can always look back on our, their memories of their parents that, hey, mm -hmm. he was the same mm -hmm. when I was a little kid, and he's the same now that I'm a teenager. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, going through that now is different. But that's my experience. That's what I want. I want them all to have manners and respect. That's the main thing. Manners and respect. You're not going to survive in this world if you don't respect things. Agree. I agree. Thank you for that, Nick. Because definitely there's no book that you can read in how to be a perfect parent, how to be a perfect father. We all go right. we always go back to how our parents raised us all. So and how you're about not for, gonna it. you're yes, not gonna learn it. about social media. Yeah, no, you can't. I hope you can learn it in TikTok though. Like I really you're not gonna learn those things on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. Right, agree. How about for how? What are the things that you wish your son, you know, should know? Things that you want to instill, so that when he'll be building his own family in the future, um, he will always go back to your words. And what are those words that you want to we want him to remember? Goodbye. Uh, so sa akin naman is napansin din naman parang few, mm -hmm. very few lang words ko, kasi more on mm -hmm. actions na yung mga pinapakita ko when it comes to my kids. Okay. Uh, like, during lunchtime, parang tahimik lang ako lagi, naikinig lang sa kanila. Pero sana ma-realize nila na daddy was constant na nagtatry talaga mag every day for lunch and for dinner. Mm -hmm. So sana madala din nila yun sa in their respective families na uh, just to make time with them, kahit wala kang sinasabi, just be there. Kasi yun yung lagi ko nakabasa eh. Hindi nila naalala kung ano yung tinuturo mo sa kanila, pero mas naalala nila na andun ka. So, again, dun sa paano mag-raise ng child or ano ang ma-instill ma ko sa kanila is uh, to love my wife. With with my everything. Kasi yun yung may kita ng son ko na kung paano mag-love ng wife or ng woman. And at the same time, yung daughters ko, yun din sana yung, yung i-aspire nila na may partner sila who will love them as who they really are. So that's, that's, that's my idea. That's beautiful answer. for no, because Nick mentioned about, you know, taking care of Maffy, even the littlest things, like opening the, yeah. the, the, the door of the car. Yeah. You in the mind, it's really like expressing your love to Ia, and then the kids will definitely learn from it. How about Martin for Renzo? What do you have for Renzo? Well, we have a 9 p.m. Nike rosary, uh, which I did attend. And every birthday celebrant, uh, they are prayed over. And, you know, the children of the birthday celebrant or the wife of the birthday celebrant uh, prays for the birthday celebrant. So I turned 53 last Sunday, January 24. And I had dinner with my kids. And when I got on the uh, 9 p.m. rosary, 
I did not know that my kids had made prayers for me, which they read out loud, which mm -hmm. brought me to tears. And you asked me about Renzo, what he basically said, which I have on recording. Sorry, Renzo. It will always be with me. But what he said, which I will never forget, mm -hmm. is that he knows that I always have his back. You know, um, also I may add, no, um, you're talking about influence. My role model was my late father, who was a successful investment banker. So my real name is Eduardo, and I'm his junior. And he was really my role model. Uh, even his signature, I copied. And a lot of people say the way I speak is just like my father. Um, he died pretty young at 55. But I will never forget what he told us. Uh, so basically, I think this is what he left the legacy. He said that mm -hmm. the value of one's life in this world is not what he ends up or has when he goes, but it is really how much influence did you really leave in this world? So it goes back to what I had earlier said when I said uh, in life will end, right? We are all going to go one day. Hmm. But the measure of how you live your life is not how much you have, is not how much how successful you are at work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not how many laps you can swim in the pool. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is really basically how you have influenced somebody. And I think what's very important is I keep saying when I'm asked to pray or lead the prayer, that when we pray for people, and I've told Renz and I've told Katya this, you know, we have to be grateful because when we're being asked for prayers, let's be grateful that we are being the we are the ones being asked to pray. Mm, okay. Some point, you know, uh, so, and then I'll talk about my late mother who, who passed away about uh, 11 years ago. I'll never forget what she said also, and I think she's instilled this in me and in my siblings, which I'm trying to pass on to my children. The best legacy really is, is education. I'm not rich, I'm not wealthy. Uh, I have a lot of friends who are playing golf already at 50, 51, 52, 53. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna end up leaving my children with. Of course, uh, you know, I will work to my utmost capability. But the measure of a good father, uh, and of much I'd like to leave, with my kids is i think a couple of things is we always have to fight for the other one. we are so lucky in many ways we are so so lucky there's so many things to be grateful for so it's need to fight for the underdog fight for people who don't have as much as we have we, we eat three meals a day right we're all here you know you go to the grocery i think i see friends here from uh or stunts or like the place of having my friends. You know, I salute these people. I salute the people in Mercury Drug. And I really, really mean that. Because and I think that's what's very important. And that's something that you should really, really be. It's, it's not the material things. So that's, uh, and maybe I'll also add what, um, you know, my daughter, uh, Sorry, yeah, when, when I was asked in a previous well-being session an hour ago, they asked us to meditate and, you know, they asked me who I saw in my meditation for about six minutes. I'll tell you, it was only the face, the faces of my two children. For I don't know why, but it's just a deep love. And I hope they know that one day when they have children, that they can tell them that your grandfather loved us so much unconditionally. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to bathe in the words that you're saying, Martin, because again, the reason why I really want to bring the fathers to the forefront, because it's rare that we get to hear words from the father. It's always about mothers talking about their experience, about their motherhood, la la. But it's so nice to hear the profound messages that you're giving me, as well as the people watching. And 
I think in closing, I'm interested to know how do you define fatherhood now? Fatherhood, you probably have an idea what fatherhood was when you were building your family, etc. But then going forward within this pandemic, we're still in the pandemic. I'll start with Nick. How do you define fatherhood now? <clears throat> well, well, I'm very grateful for my grandfather and my dad for, for teaching me how to be a father. Uh, it was a lot of tough love. You know, it was very un unconventional. But now that I'm a father, I realize that all the lessons that they taught me make me the father I am now. And I'm not perfect. I'm far from that. Um, and and my, my kids now, they're going into teenage and adulthood, and, and they're quick to tell me how not perfect I am. But uh, I, I just feel like I'm happy for what I've experienced and where we are right now and uh, as a family. And, and it's weird because this whole talk we've had is, is how the pandemic has opened up so many new doors for us as a family. Like we would have never done a lot of the things we're doing now, the rituals, the workouts, the, you know, uh, the, the traditions we've created. And I'm very traditional, so I've, I've always created traditions, but so many new traditions came into our family just because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But I'm also, you know, it's it's you're right what you said about how the the mothers get to dominate the, the, the top space. shows. Get to like what do we call these things? The the, uh, the platforms. You know, uh, my wife has dominated for a long time, and, and she told me about this, and I was happy to oblige and, and be a part of it. But I'm just happy with this show because, like, Fur, I've learned a lot of things just listening to Fur. Uh, Martin, I've known for a long time, and, and I've learned so much more about Martin just on this show that I, uh, I didn't know. Mm. And, and, you know, we're fathers. You know, we, we have to have a uh, say. We have to let people know our stories. And this is, like, one of the first times that we've actually had a chance to do that. Uh, and we're also different, but the cool thing is we get to learn from each other. But I'm just thankful for uh, being a father. I think I think being a father is one of the best things in life. Like uh, I'm so thankful to be able to teach my kids and, and take all the traditions that I've learned from my my ancestors and, and pass it down to them and mm -hmm. teach them new things. And, and learn new things from them as well. Like I learned so much from my kids. They teach me something new every day. Right. So uh, it, it's journey. Journey. vice versa, it seems like, Nick. Like we learn from the kids. The kids probably learn from us too, but majority of the learnings really might come from them. Um, I feel yeah. personally. So learning. One thing I want to say uh, I'm, 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 that I'm happy about is that uh, that that traditional schooling got stopped for a little bit. You know, our our kids are homeschooled, and, and we're huge advocates for homeschooling. We've been doing it for how many years? Maybe seven, 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 seven years. years. Seven years, uh, and and we we took them away from a lot of the dangers that the kids have to deal with these days with phones and Instagram and social mm -hmm. media. Uh, and, and really homeschooled them because we didn't we didn't like what they were getting in the traditional mm. schools. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know with, with what's happening, but now the whole world got shut down, and everyone's on this homeschooling platform. And I'm just kind of curious to how we're going to rebuild it. Everyone's going to come back from from this, and how we're going to recover as a world, and as a country, and as a mm -hmm. community. But it's do you different. Get to and, Nick, do you get to redefine? fatherhood differently now after the pandemic like how do you if you can have like few words of what fatherhood is if someone will ask you i would say um like like what martin and first said we we all have a, a better we we have we get to have a better hold on our kids you know like better. they're not 
they're not learning so much from the schools and from their classmates. They're learning from us and mm. and and moms directly. Big nod. You know, and I think, Big nod there. Agreed. I think that's the biggest because uh, when they're in school, they're learning from each other. They're learning from social media. They're learning mm. from Google. They're learning from YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's different. So now that all that stuff got shut down, we have a better hold on our kids. And, and now it's up to us how are we going to build from here forward. That's because, beautiful. Because pre-pandemic, uh, I don't I don't think we had any control at all. Hmm. Now, post-pandemic or, or whatever you want to call it, the new normal, it's a chance for us to really grab a hold of our kids and, and build from here. Mm -hmm. We would have never had this chance without this mm -hmm. COVID situation. So fatherhood seems like it's still like a clean slate that you can redefine later on and you can it really is. later on. It really and that's is. A good thing. You put it perfect. It, it, it's kind of a clean slate that we would have never had. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we need to take advantage of it and make the most of it because pre-pandemic it wasn't looking so nice. Thank you. How about for what are your um, thoughts about fatherhood? Like when you think of the word fatherhood, what is it to you now, um, post pandemic or during the pandemic even? Mm -hmm. uh, sa akin is napansin ko lang kay Nick and Martin. Like, maraming tinuturo yung dad nila uh, sa kanila, which mm -hmm. is very opposite sa akin kasi yung dad ko naman is laging tahimik. So, okay. Ang sa akin lang is, parang yun yung nakuha ko sa kanya is, naging uh, constant. Yun yung word constant. ko sa father ko. He's constant. Uh, and it will remain constant like that during the pandemic yeah. and after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So okay. during breakfast, andun siya sa bahay. During lunch, andun siya. Tapos mm -hmm. during dinner, andun siya. So mm -hmm. kung may kailangan mo na ako kay dad, andun siya mm -hmm. for breakfast, andun siya for lunch, andun siya for dinner. So yun yung na, na nadala ko sa pagiging father. So gusto ko maging constant and mm -hmm. fatherhood for me is uh bittersweet. Kasi mm -hmm. bigyan mo lang sila ng wings to just fly away. Yung safe. Alam nila kung saan sila papunta. So True. it's very bittersweet, bittersweet for me. For the wings. Okay. How about Martin? What is fatherhood to you now? You know, if that was asked of me uh, when I was 13, about 23 years ago, I think the safe answer, especially if it was a quiz or an oral exam, you say, you say fatherhood is, in one word, responsibility. And that's always a safe answer. And it is responsibility. But at, at this age, and how my journey has gone, I can't describe it in one word, but you know, I'll just say, I'll use three words if I may. It's really a gift from God. Gift you know, um, I talked about, I talked about idolizing my father, and he was really my idol. And I lost my mentor, and he was, he was uh, the mentor of all the investment bankers now. And you know, I asked God even four months. Before my graduation, he passed away. Why did you take him now when he was supposed to mentor me? But what that has taught me when I look at my children, especially Renzo, you know, I have basically forgotten a lot of traditions about trying to become like my father because the world is so different. Right. And in many ways, Renzo and I have a lot of similarities. So I tell him, you know, uh, whatever you end up wanting to do, whatever you want to do in the future, I got your back. And I think I've always told him, it's so easy for people to say, try to become a better version of your father. Mm. The good things I got my father, I, I got, uh, hopefully. The bad things I got my father, from my father, hey, I miss Junior, I also got. But you know, for Renzo, I think the message is very clear if he's still listening. It's not really to try to become a better version of your father. Mm -hmm. But it's trying, it's, you know, be a better husband, I think is very important. 
better husband. But when it talks about when it talks about your yourself, it's more than trying to become a better version of your father. It's to become the best version that you can be. Best if there are version. things, if there are things that you like about me and how I've lived my life, then do that. If there are things that you say, hey, pop, you know, the, those, uh, those the times you stumbled, you know, avoid those, Renzo. And, and mm -hmm. you know, we mess around here every weekend, but we really have our heart-to-heart -heart talk. And uh, so for me, it's really a blessing. Every day I wake up and every night before I go to sleep, and this is no joke, I never used to do this, but I really, really thank God for my 23-year-old daughter, Katya, and my 15-year-old my son. And I think all fathers, Nick, for Martin, you're all thankful for your kids. And I'm sure that your kids, too, are very thankful to have you as their father. And I really would like to thank the three of you for stepping in and sharing your stories and representing the fathers out there that it's okay to talk about your life as a father because you have you can learn a lot from you so i hope this is not the end but just the start of the open conversation that fathers out there can have um, with different people that they choose to share their lives with so i'd like again to thank nick martin and fur Thank you, thank you so much. I would probably, I would even say that this is even more profound a conversation than I had with the moms, really. Um, I myself am very touched. So thank you so much. I honor your stories and I honor you. Yes, Martin, go ahead. Can I, can I just greet the, I just want to say thank you very go much. Go ahead, to, I'm just surprised, no, but I see my barber here from Bruno's. Salam, marami, salam. <laughs> uh, yeah, but thank you to everybody, all my friends. and. Thank you very much. And thanks for having us, Polly. And Nick Thank and Fur, I really enjoyed it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thank, Thank you, Fur. Thank you, Martin. See you around, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So there you have it. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, um, wherever you may be. I think this is a refreshing um, reminder that we can always interact with our dads. And if you're a dad out there, it's always okay to express your thoughts, express your opinions, and even share your story as a father. So thank you everyone and good night.